where Yvonne Lendl and John McEnroe are due any moment now on stadium court. And sometime shortly, will begin their men's singles quarterfinal match, a match that was delayed slightly this evening because of the length of the afternoon session and the switching of the patrons. The afternoon session folks leaving and those holding evening session tickets arriving. And as Barry and I were just gazing up at the stands, the very top row is already filled. And Barry, that's usually a sign this is going to be a sellout. I'm sure it's going to be a complete sellout tonight. And I guarantee you there's some people from this afternoon's crowd that are slipping around here waiting to uh, see if there's any empty seats. You think the worst. I know it's true. <laughs> Our producer, Stephen Fetter, once upon a time, used to do that at Forest Hills. He doesn't like us to tell him that, but he does. Lendl and McEnroe, it's the match that most people have been awaiting here at the U.S. Open. It's the match that McEnroe himself has pointedly said he wanted all the way along. Well, he has it, and he's moments away from taking the court to play the number one man in the world. Three years ago in Paris, John McEnroe and Yvonne Lendl stepped up their rivalry to historic proportions. In a group marathon, Lendl overcame heat exhaustion and a two-set deficit to take his first Grand Slam title. It devastated McEnroe. But Johnny Mac took revenge three months later in New York, tearing down Lendl's game. The straight set victory secured McEnroe's claim as the world's number one. One year later, it was Lendl's turn. In a ground stroke clinic, Lendl punished McEnroe. His straight set victory leap blocked Lendl to number one, and he hasn't looked back since. Yvonne Lendl is the heavyweight champ of men's tennis. Every time you win the big tournament, you enjoy it so much, and it's such a great feeling that you get more and more hungry for the feeling again, and you want it again and again and again. It's never enough. And I know I can beat him. I've beaten him a lot of times, and I've beaten him a lot of big matches, and he knows he can beat me, so it's gonna be a, I think it's going to be a great match. One of the great rivalries in tennis history resumes tonight. Lendl versus McEnroe next on USA Sports. There's the overall meeting. McEnroe leading 14 to 12 and head to head. Stratton Mountain, again, we mentioned to you that was just last month. McEnroe winning a first set tie break. Then the second set suspended due to rain. And it was a final that could not be completed, may never be completed. And I'm sure that match uh, is very, very important to both of them right now. McEnroe feels that no question he was ahead in that match and winning, even though the second set didn't look that good. And I'm sure as they walked out there tonight, the memory of that match is very clear in their minds. Mary Carrillo has uh, headed back up here to the booth. And uh, Mary, you were down there. What's it, what's it like? The atmosphere seems pretty tense to me. It really is. I mean, this is, this is the tennis event of the year, it seems, the way uh, the people have been flocking in. There really is. John McEnroe to begin the match. Very smart play because as we said earlier, it's tough to warm up in five minutes, especially in the evening, as we look at Jerry Armstrong from Great Britain, who will be the umpire. And I'm sure his heart's pitter-pattering a bit. Any umpire that walks out there with these two guys... Uh, Does an really umpire before a match like this get instruction, help, guidance from anyone? I was just hoping Not really. By the time they get to this stage, Ted, they're, they're ready to go. They've had a lot of experience. I've watched umpires actually loosen up before they get in that chair. They start following the ball. They, they, they warm up just like the players do, you know. They're, they're watching calls, and we are about ready to roll here. The last time these two men had met before Stratton Mountain last month was right here in the finals two years ago, which Lendl won in straight sets. Lendl making McEnroe wait just a little bit there. Could be a little strategy. They've only played twice in the quarterfinals of a tournament before. That once was here in 1980 and once with the French in 81. McEnroe to serve. <coughs> Quiet, please. I guarantee you they're going to have some Thank problems you. with the people milling around here because it's going to take Ready? another half hour before everybody settles down. And at 8.20 Eastern time, we're ready play. to play.
Monroe gets a big hand as he starts off with a deep serve to the backhand. 15 love. Ladies and gentlemen, please, no flash photography. Thank you. Hear that tension on the McEnroe racket. Much tighter strung than it was a year ago. Thirty, love. Earlier this week, McEnroe said, I feel like I'm capable of playing a great match. It's just that I haven't gone a whole tournament playing great. He needs a great match to beat Lendl. Please, no flash. Thank you. <laughs> that loss last year to Anacone really sent John into a tailspin. Then he and his partner, Peter Fleming, got defaulted for arriving late to their first round doubles match. <laughs> Who do you think they're pulling for? <laughs> 40, love. Break there for John, because that ball just sat up. The only number one player in the world that can be an underdog. Always seems that way, doesn't it, with Yvonne Lindel? Oh. And McEnroe holds his serve to start the match. We pause for this local many people milling around. In the aisles, Lendl is not ready yet, will not probably be for another moment or so. That's what we're talking about. Oh. McEnroe immediately starts off trying to hit the return. 15 low. Last two years, Yvonne Lendl has not lost a match in this stadium. There could not be a better climate for an upset for John McEnroe. It's a night match where upsets tend to happen. The night people really come out after John. These guys are all pumped up for him. He's played himself into form. And he looks very sharp in these first few points, especially that forehand he just hit down the line. Watch the serve of Yvonne Lendl. Kind of cocks that wrist. Flattens out the grip. The high toss. Now the ball's on the starting to come down as he makes contact. Nice easy motion though. Really leans into it well. flying start here. A great point as McEnroe really hits that forehand. Lendl almost with a passing shot. Yvonne on the full run goes for the winner cross court. McEnroe lunges, hits the volley into the open court. Good quality tennis here early. Second game. Second ace for Lendl. 14, 13.
40-30. Jimmy Connors in the semifinal waiting for the winner of this match. Think you'll watch this tonight? Oh, game ended. Three aces in this game. And, and that went on a second serve. That was a second serve, wasn't one it? Game. Yes. Didn't look like one, but it sure was. <laughs> sure didn't. I wonder what runs through Lendl's mind when he comes out here to play, and he's he lives here, and he's a champion, and he's the underdog to the fans. And the knowledgeable tennis people don't consider him an underdog, but he comes out here, and, and everyone's rooting for McEnroe. I think it drives him nuts, if you, if you want to know my opinion. Low 15. Let's have a look at the McEnroe serve. Bends down. Please, the left arm no goes up Thank real you. early. Now, John hits that ball right at the top of the toss. Lendl lets it drop more. Totally different type serves. Lendl maybe just a bit more power. John's more finesse. He moves it around more. <laughs> 15 all. Quick eye there. I can row about ready to volley that ball. Thought better of it. Let it go. It was about a foot over the baseline. First service. John's got to try to keep Lindell on the run as he hits his passing shots because once Lindell gets set, he could really fire them away. It's not easy to keep Lindell off balance. 40-15. U.S. Open tonight has turned into one big party. I mean, this is a, this is a typical New York top-shelf sporting event. Usher skates, please. This place is fast filling up. You can see the folks just pouring in here. It's overflowing. They really, there's no way there are enough seats for all these people. Look at this crowd. 20,633 <laughs> people. There will not be one empty seat in about 10 Ladies more and gentlemen, minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, seats, please, behind the court. Thank that's you. That's the problem here is the walkways continue to be jammed up, and the players won't play until at least everyone behind the ends of the courts is seated. I'll tell you, if I had a day session ticket earlier today, I would have ducked out by, into the, by the back courts, and that's, I'd have snuck my way back in. Uh, I know. And I'm a, a New Yorker. We know all the <laughs> angles. You don't want to miss a match like this. Please stand, stand still, still behind, behind the court. They've stopped trying to get him to sit now. They just asked him to stand still. I say, sit, sit on someone's lap. Wendell to serve at 1-2. I still get a kick out of this. How about those NBA guys on the foul line? As they look up at that backboard, there's mm -hmm. 3,000 people Screaming. waving. Arms. Yeah, and they said, you know, hey, we have all those people sit down, please. I'm trying to shoot a free throw here. <laughs> Oh. 
did exactly what he wanted to there, except I don't think his approach shot was quite as deep as he would have liked. Wendell drilled a good passing shot, and it dropped. Runs around the ball, hits it into the open court. Fantastic Caught, shot. That's the only way he could have played that ball, as it turns out. He couldn't believe Lendl got to the first ball. Exactly. bothered by the flash to his left. John's going to try to be all over that net tonight. He's just going to come in on everything. That's the way he used to be, Lindell. You know, John never used to work at this game at all. He said earlier this year, I can be better than when I was at my best. Being number one fell upon me the first time. I might as well try to be number one again. He's in shape, he admits that. He said after 28 years of not being in shape. Advantage lentil. Split second decision there by McEnroe. Hit the good return and then raced in behind it, but Lendl hit a better forehand. McEnroe's overall situation. Didn't you say in 1984 he arrived here about 20 minutes before the final? That was in 85. 85? He, said, he claims he said... Reached his all-time loose. <laughs> he said, yeah, that was, the, that was the absolute worst. You know, he, he, he had gone to the absolute limits of sloppy habits, he said. In 
1985, when he lost to Lendl, he said, I showed up 20 minutes before my match though. against Lendl. For that the, was in 85. For the finals of the U.S. Open. That, and as a matter of fact, that's when Ivan Lendl won his first U.S. national championship. John won his first U.S. title on this day, September 9th, back in 1979. He's won it four times in all. 79, 80, and 81, three in a row. It looked like he was, it was gonna have, he was gonna have that dynastic quality that Borg had at Wimbledon. But it was Jimmy Connors who stopped Please, that, winning no it in 82. Percentage by both. Very high for John. I mean, McEnroe doesn't usually serve that high a percentage. More flashes. Please, behind the court. No flash photography. Thank you. player has 40, lost a point yet on second serve in this match. That's a high quality statistic right there. Forty love. Sometime. That was a big forehand that Lendl won on. 40-15. Talk about one of the biggest weapons in the game today, the Lendl forehand. Watch how he gets that racket back. Just smashes over the ball. Strong wrist. Great hips. Good hips and shoulder action. Sir, first set, we pause now for a local break. Not even Connors. And we see Samantha Frankel, Lundell's companion. We mentioned earlier during the Connors match that McEnroe admires Connors for being able to play the game at the age of 35 without the need to be number one, but to still play at a high level just because he loves the game. The thing is, McEnroe and Connors they weren't always buddies either. Right. Stand they really still, weren't. Please. But somehow old enemies become old friends. What we're waiting for again are people. There are simply too many people moving and in the walkways. Quiet, and the please. players will not play until there is no movement, at least in the areas around the court. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Sussers ought to get a little overtime or See what double happens. time tonight. These first time, all a lot of New Yorkers who've never come to a tennis match before, they say, hey, I can get up and go out when Gary Carter's batting. What's the deal here? Please stand, stand still. still. Thank, Thank you. you. That's another thing John always said, which was true. He's, he always felt that he brought out players who weren't tennis fans. They just, they came out because of who John was. Please just take, just a, take seat a seat on the, on the steps. steps. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I think Connors has that appeal too, Mary. A lot of people that never thought of tennis have heard of Jimmy Connors, and they're going to come out and watch him. Eventually, Lendo will serve.
15 love. 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 Wendell holds at love, and we're at three all in the first set. Three games over. And you know, at this stage in a set, you win an easy game like that on your serve, and it kind of gets your spirit going, because now Lendl is totally rested. He's ready to receive serve on McEnroe's serve. Hasn't expended any energy in that last game on his own serve. I'm sure that might help him slightly right here. He had to be a little tight anyway, walking right. onto this arena. This is like uh, the old Roman Colosseum, and everyone's staring at Lendl, and they've got their thumbs down. Well, he received Mary in that first game, and he just got blown right off the court. Four good points for McEnroe, so he's eased his way into this match right now. Love 15. A double fault by McEnroe, his first. like the way Cyclops was calling his serves against Slobodan Zibayunovic two rounds ago. This has always been one of Lendl's good weapons. The top spin forehand lob. Watch him run around it here. Waits for McEnroe to make the move and then just flicks it over John's head. Watch this shot again. Lendl quickly back, senses the opportunity. Look at the roll on that wrist. Quickly up and then that ball is going to drop down. He knew he had that shot. Love 30. Fifteen thirty. First real test here for McEnroe. In trouble. agrees with Cyclops on that and loudly calls that shot long. Oh, he was lucky to Second get a left. I'll tell you what, 
There's Mary Kempfer who called the lead on that, but Lendl Hard. thought that John's ball bobbled out. It looked like yeah. that ball might have hit the net and gone for a double fault. No call. Second serve. Ooh, McEnroe takes a big chance on the second serve down the middle. Second double fault, and we get our first potential break of the match. Lendl with two break points. by too much either. Lendl up a break in the first. People are crouching behind railings. They are sitting on the aisles and the steps. They are sitting anywhere they can. McEnroe, of course, is probably more upset about the fact that he double faulted away a game. Two double faults in that crucial three-all game. That really hurt him, and his percentage has dropped from 80 to 50 first serves that 90 seconds supposed that su supposed 90 second changeover just went three minutes and 25 seconds Fifteen low. John again with that top spin lob. Got him cold. 30, love. It really is a wonderful shot of the top seeds. Same shot he ha hit against Pat Cash in that semifinal. Down match point. Lindell hit the same shot to get right back in that match. Well, John has made it abundantly clear that he's going to be coming in and, and pressing and attacking 40, at every opportunity. Love. So Lindell's doing a good job of throwing those lobs up trying to keep him off the net. pattern for McEnroe has developed here and that Lendl has won his last two service games. Lendl leads five, five games, games to three. three. Which, as we mentioned, gives him that little bit of extra rest. He can prepare for this game now. He'll swing very freely in this service game. Why not? hit that return but it almost fell in the corner that can happen take a big swing you miss hit the ball you don't like the way it feels but the darn thing drops in
good recovery here. McEnroe barely gets his racket on this overhead. Lendl quickly in. Uh, John unwinds on his backhand, hits out on it. Lendl just lets that ball go a couple inches over the baseline. Kind of reminiscent of the Connors Gilbert game and the length of points, isn't it? These points don't last very long. Gets this ball way out in front. Gets the great angle. Look where he makes contact with that ball. Perfect form. He knew he had that shot. The minute he felt it hit his racket. Please, the TV booth. Thank you. That always calms him down. He just plucks out a couple of eyelashes and he's he's okay again. He really that's a very common habit of his. Oh I know. I'm surprised he's got any left. <laughs> 40-30. must grow back in very oh, quickly. Yes. Did they regenerate? carries a bunch of sawdust in his pocket. I thought sometimes, Mary, that it was sawdust that he was trying to get out of his eyes or whatever. Missed big on that first serve. Last service game, John double faulted twice. Second Close to another double fault. McEnroe having to work much harder on his own serve now than Lendl as we look at the net umpire. Yeah, there's really been two different sets here. His serve and Lendl's serve. And the miss now gives Lendl a set point. Advantage Lendl. I was surprised John went to the forehand on that approach shot. I thought he'd hit cross court, make Lendl pass him off the backhand. Technical Don crews have done a please. fabulous job Seats. all day long. Staying with us as we begin our 10th consecutive hour. And Yvonne Lendl holds up new tennis balls, changing at 9 and 11. And a distinct advantage to serve with new balls because those things will... That right. says an awful lot, doesn't it? Please just hold still. Very low percentage for McEnroe. Less than 50%. 
Well, you know, I, I think John's trying to come in. He, he knows he's got to come in against Yvonne, but I think he's coming in on some pretty dubious stuff. He's got to maybe pick his spots better, not be in such a rush to get in unless his shots are there. But the big story in that first set, from my point of view, is that this man, this Yvonne, man. who started out perhaps a little tight, a little overwhelmed by the task of having to play in front of over 20,000 people, most of whom were cheering against him, I think he's really settled down. He loosened up after those first couple of games, and now he's swinging very freely, very confidently. Well, the other thing, Mary's winning points so much more easily on his own serve. He's continued to do that, it looks like, here in the first game of the second set. And over a three out of five set match, that's going to have a big effect on McEnroe. He's working so much harder on his own serve. That's something Pancho Segura had said before the tournament began. He said, I think John can beat everybody else, but it's questionable if he'll beat Lendl in a three out of five set match on cement, the way Lendl is playing right now. I think that Segura gets charged up enough, Mary. He's fun to talk to, isn't he? Isn't he wonderful? He's great. Talk about emotion. He won a lot of matches on pure emotion, Pancho Segura. 40 love. First service. Serve was good, but it was a left. Love and leads one love second set. Love 15. Wendell's starting to get grooved on the return. McEnroe's going to have to do some change up here, move it around a little bit more. Please stand still. You know how many people are slipping ushers $10 bills tonight? is trying even harder to break him one more time. And again, it's that forehand lob that beats John Cole. He is three for three top spin lobs. Successful on all three attempts, and that is a very risky shot under most conditions. And he has Johnson. three break points.
30, 40. Again, delayed two love. Lendl, watch this top spin lob. It has become one of the most dangerous shots in the game on the Lendl full run. McEnroe thinks he has him, takes a couple steps forward. The ball just inside. Watch this shot again. Flips it up. Watches it closely. He knows he has it right there. Thank you. He's just putting together a terrific match. And he's up a set and a break in the second. This is where John is going to have to find something to do. He's just got to, he's not even in the game on Lendl's serve right now. Love. Lendl still hasn't even lost a point on his second serve. As you look at it, how many more winners he's got than John. Nine for nine on second serves. He's now won 13 straight points in his service games. Lendl putting together Love. about six of the best points you can play right in a row. Watch the backhand now. He just eases into it. Beautiful concentration. High follow through. A clean winner. Off a full press by John. And that was a very, very strong reply off that serve. Lendl still gobbled it up. 30 love. Pressing him, a good approach Fourteen, shot. Love. Watch this. McEnroe hits it up the line, deep, moves in. Lendl just drills it again right down that line. McEnroe's got to be saying to himself, What do I have to do to win a point? 15 straight points. Lendl has won on his serve. McEnroe now has backed up way behind that baseline. Smart play, try and change the rhythm. Faults. Linesman unsighted. Michael. Here's a chair overrule, calling a fault. I think it's smart that McEnroe might play back a little bit. You know, he's trying to come in on everything, and Lendl's just been too tough. For the fourth straight game, Lendl wins his serve. At love, we'll be back after this local in the stands. Still now behind there us, are the over 20,000 people in the stadium. They're sitting in the aisles. They're standing everywhere they can. And right now they're watching a clinic from Yvonne Lendl. Could you imagine the front the front place. being in a plane right now, flying into LaGuardia Airport, looking down and saying, what on earth could be happening over there? but trying to play on the grandstand while this match is going on. A roar goes up for McEnroe as he finally wins.
Towards the point. 15 left. Please, no flash photography. McEnroe down Thank a set you. and a break in the second. No question that Yvonne Lindell just played about 10 of the best points in his career as he ripped those backhand passing shots. Quickly to 40, Love. 40, Love. McEnroe needs this game badly. Good serve deep to the forehand. Great half volley there. Lendl on the full run. Again, moving so well, he almost makes the get on that shot. After winning the first three games to one. He's going to need some more love games like that on his own serve just to conserve energy because Lendl's been ripping away on his own serve. Four straight games, Lendl has won at love on his serve. It has to be driving McEnroe nuts. Again, that, that serve of Lindell's is too big right now for John to be trying to, to chip and charge or, or at that forehand he tried to roll over it and charge. Yvonne serving too well for that right now. Oh. Four aces for Lindell. Have you ever Four seen him play this well, Barry? It's the best I've seen him play. The best streak of games that Please. I've ever seen him I'm play. Thank you. The first double fault for Yvonne Lindell. McEnroe has made a den in Lindell's He's serve. not happy about it. There's 
somebody moving in the back that I think he was what he was unhappy about. The serve was clearly out. Oh. But he comes back from a double fault with an ace, and Lendl leads 4-1 in the second. They're doing a little bit better job of getting the folks seated during the changeovers now. I can't believe that gets laughs. I just, I, I've got a real problem with that. And there's nothing funny about that. That's John's fourth. John has a big problem with that. Well, when he double faults these days, 90% of them are going into the net, which makes you think that that toss is not quite as high as it should be. I haven't seen Tony Palafox here tonight. Have you, Mary? He must be here. Well, it could be a little rough trying to find him in here, There's Bear. only 20,000 people. He's here. He's right down below. <laughs> 15. Back and roll. Takes a little extra practice on the serve there. One of Lendl's few errors of the evening. of the evening that he's missed right there. 30-15. The raucousness of the crowd has settled down quite a bit with the Superior play of Lendl. Oh. A huge collective awe, oh, though, when Macaro missed that one. I think they're so quiet because they're, they're, they're giving John all the silence he needs to try to hold his serve here. Otherwise, he'd be down 5-1. And they know that this night would be short. Lendl's human. 40, game point of a game McEnroe must have. Advantage. 
Mitch McEnroe. On the center line, but long. Interesting contrast. One linesman calls it good, the other calls it out. to Lendl in the second set. John needed a little help here because he's been getting burned on these lobs all night from Lendl, but he was able to reach up for that one. And boy, did he need it. He hopes there's at least one fan on his side. Quiet, please. But Lendl is still up Thank at you. key service break here in the second set. now walking away as a plane flies overhead. In very few planes today, actually, it's been relatively quiet. Help! 15 low. Second fault, double fault for Yvonne Lendl. 15 0. But it comes at a great time here. It gives McEnroe a chance to possibly get back in this set. He has to break right here. This is the second game in a row where Lendl has given John just a little bit more air to breathe. John's got to capitalize here. Frustrating for McEnroe because he knows that it's all going to come down to this game right here. Devon can play a much more relaxed game than McEnroe right now. And he does. Look at that. Really pumped it right in there. the lead 5-2 in the second set. Story of this match. Something else Lendl said to Tyriac. Lendl told Tyriac in, in Sydney earlier this year, there's no way Mac can get close to him now. Tyriac's quote is, he, Lendl, said, his ball is much slower and he's much slower. 
Tyriac said, I don't agree twice with Lendl in my life, but on this, he is right. <laughs> Jerry Armstrong, our chair umpire. Crowd looking for an opportunity to support McEnroe. Anytime he hits any kind of a shot, they go wild. The applause should really be for the top seed. Lendl is playing the kind of tennis you dream about. A fan has just been chased out of the stadium by one of the ushers. And John wants two serves. But he doesn't get it. quandary if you're John McEnroe. You want to keep your service percentage up high and serve big, but if you miss it, you run the risk of facing a huge Lindell return. Lindell's returning about as well as I've ever seen him return. Low, hard, consistent. applauding McEnroe's serving, hoping that gives them some hope to back him. But it's really Lendl's serve right now that's the key. Until McEnroe can get into those games, he's going to have a tough time. Oh, no, McEnroe holds, but Lendl will serve for the set. Lendl leads five games to three. The scores look pretty desperate for McEnroe, but really, he's just a break away. Just a break. The way Lendl's serving, it's a pretty tough task. Lendl just overpowering McEnroe, not giving him time to get set on the ground strokes, keeping him off balance. That's why he switched rackets just about a week ago. He felt that he needed more power and that he could get it from a slightly larger racket just so he can keep up with these guys. Lendl, Becker, Edberg. Samantha Frankel on Tony's 15. left to our right, and Lendl taking a big chance there on a swinging forehand volley. He took his eye off that one, Barry. It's a little too one, easy. 
almost letting him think he misses a shot like that and 20,000 people <laughs> applaud. Go crazy. Five plays. It's a tough room to work. He's been hearing that kind of action for the last five years out on this court. So let's. Plays no flash photography. Oh. Huge point for McEnroe there. That was not an easy ball. Not that difficult a ball, I should say, for him to come in behind. Really, he just stood straight up as he hit this, and that's what caused the error. Lendl now just two points away from a two-set lead. Approaches for Lendl in the match, but it gets him to set point. 40, 15. to none. We'll take a local break and be back. Lendl, of course, coming back from two sets to love down against McEnroe to win that Please French championship. Please join the Stand still. 1984. That was his first Grand Slam title. You got a tea break, too? When, when John talks about that French match... When John talks about that French match now, he's, he, he admits that he choked it. He was up two sets. He was in firm control. Just couldn't pull it off. That ball dropped pretty low on that forehand volley, but McEnroe has such good touch. He controlled it down that sideline.
Now McEnroe holds to start the third set. Suddenly, McEnroe comes to life here. Good reflex on the backhand. Lendl gets to the volley. Now, watch the power on this shot. Yeah, but watch Quack, how please. John trailed it, made sure it was going out. The way Lendl's playing tonight, John just wanted to make sure. And how odd it was a roll reversal. McEnroe trying to pass Lendl at net. Here's McEnroe the point. One of the few McEnroe has had in about the last hour on Lundell's serve. No. <laughs> Love 30. First ray of hope in about a set and a half here for John McEnroe. So much for your ray of light. <laughs> Three straight points in overpowering succession. Look at look where John's standing. Yes. McEnroe is way in. Listen, he's trying it's everything worth, at this point. Exactly. Worth a try. Change it up. Let Please Lendl, no flash photography. Lendl's going to have a, a different look at McEnroe as he moves in two or three feet in front of the baseline. What's he got to lose? It's not working the other way. One shot, McEnroe way inside the baseline. Deuce. Perfect timing. Just gets to this volley and puts it away. But psychologically, a great move for McEnroe there to try and change things around here. Quiet, please. Thank you. Virtually half volleyed the I'll service say, he, return. Yeah, he short hopped a big serve and just kept coming in. And he's going to try it again. 
McEnroe well inside the baseline. Look at that. <laughs> well, the point is, if he can get his racket on the serve that early, the speed of Lendl's exactly. serve is going to ricochet off John's racket for a clean winner. Lendl won't even We finish. don't suggest you try this at home. <laughs> Couldn't put the overhead away. They're just sitting there for Lendl. McEnroe now Advantage Lendl. gets a break, comes in. Lendl throws up a fairly easy-looking lob, but John doesn't get his racket totally on the ball. Gets set up for a clean passing shot. Third set. I will go on for a new racket. Technically only 30 seconds. Here. Well, it's interesting because he took a break after he secured the second set. He ran off the court. He's got three minutes in which to recover from whatever was ailing him. And now, too, it looks like he's chomping on something. That he might not be feeling too well. Don't try to tell that to the server. <laughs> But obviously something's bugging Lendl a little bit. Please stand still. We have now passed the 10 hour mark into our 11th hour of consecutive tennis today. it takes to fly from San Francisco to London. That's right. You know that well. <laughs> well that one down, Pat. Love that McEnroe with five double faults. It's interesting what he just said about where's the beeper after Saturday's match. Uh, McEnroe was saying that he wishes that the sport of tennis would take money and sink it in and come up with a totally electronic system. Eliminate all the human linesmen and the Billie Jean people. King says the same exact thing. <laughs> he just can't handle the pace. I mean, Lendl is Love rushing him so much that even when he comes to net, you'd think where you'd think he'd gain control of the rally, he doesn't. McEnroe's won the U.S. Open four times. This is his favorite event. Lendl has won it twice, and you don't think Lendl likes it? Listen to what he did after this point. Lendl has done it the last couple of years. Every time 15, 13. the U.S. Tennis Association resurfaces this court, the stadium court, Lendl has the same company, the same workmen, go over to his Greenwich, Connecticut estate, and using the same materials, resurface his court. Ooh. We do recommend that for everyone at home, don't we? Yes, we do recommend that for everyone at home. <laughs> if you really want to win this thing, do it right. The returns are so low, so consistent. But McEnroe 30, 40. has been continually volleying up all night. Lendl just waits for that volley. Watch it again here. He moves around, still comes over the ball. Look how low the ball is. Yvonne loves to see that forehand sit up. Clean passing shot. 
break point Lendl. Continues. Lendl breaks again. Close to his. And she just hits him right off the court. Groff advanced much earlier today. In her match, she plays Lori McNeil, an upset winner over third seeded Chris Everett. In the biggest shocker of the day, of the tournament. Oh. Correction. Correct. McEnroe was ready to move. What's funny here is that John had already conceded the point as well. Jerry Armstrong of Great Britain in the chair. But McEnroe started to move over, acknowledging the ace. I think he's just trying to say he doesn't like the overrule. Seventh ace by Lendl. service games, Lendl has lost only 12 total points. That's it. It's been two different matches. With McEnroe serves, it's been okay. With Lendl's been serving, it's been a rout. set. You know, really, I, if John hangs back a little bit, although there's not much time left for him, Lendl doesn't hit as hard on the baseline. He just doesn't go for it as big, but John keeps giving him a target, and he's just swiping the ball right through him, around him, over him. Just don't think Lendl goes for so many big shots Five, during a rally. Davis Cup captain Tom Gorman looked at some old tapes of the McEnroe serve and he really feels that John has changed it. He remember how elaborate John's serve used to look. The pumping action, that right leg he used to have splayed way out there and he'd have a lot of, of back bend. This is a much more shortened version and Gorman feels he's not getting the leg and the hip action into it that he used to. 30. I tend to agree. His serve, John's serve, used to be a much longer 
affair. The back problem have something to do with it? It could be. That, that, that could be. As a matter of fact, Gorman brought it up to John. And John knows that it is different. Remember how far apart his legs used to be. Forty fifteen. Watch the return up the line here from Lendl's backhand. Good deep serve. He just stretches out, blocks the ball, takes the pace of the McEnroe serve. John isn't even close. I can realize that very few volleys above the net to, tonight on that first shot. They've all been low. Every time Lindell hits the return, it's dropping. And after a while, it gets tough. This is almost as good as match point, unfortunately, because if McEnroe gets down two service breaks and two sets to love, get a minor miracle to get out of that. We'll take Lazarus. Mary, here's what you're talking about. When he lines up with the feet, they're only about 18 inches, maybe a foot apart. It used to be almost two, two and a half, three feet. Big spread. Juice. Lendl's going to have a little chat with that's Leon Lip from Dallas on that sideline. Jer Jerry Armstrong. That is Leon Lip, one of the good chair umpires who is on the surf sidelines down there. Ryan. Last time Leon missed a call was back in 72 in Dallas Junior Tournament. He doesn't miss him. John 
Allen didn't like the toss. And a double fault. Advantage Lendl. Which gives Lendl another break point. Seven double faults by McEnroe. Six double faults. Just why didn't miss by much. Yes. shots here as McEnroe serves Advantage good McEnroe. return again John lunges for the ball just gets the, watch this get by Lindell gets the angle if McEnroe had enough court to hit into there beautiful recovery here half volley the ball just dies as it gets over the net now he moves quickly into the open court How fast is Lindell? Oh, he is really moving. Because he was behind the baseline when he started there. <laughs> Look at that. The last, the Jeez. last three times on the return of serve, Lindell has hit up the line. This time, crisply cross court. They are just got to be protecting to his right. And there, Lendl goes to his left. Excuse me, guys. I'm just, I just want to say that John is so overmatched tonight. I mean, this is uh, in every single department. Advantage McEnroe. That's one of the few floating returns that Lendl's hit tonight. Gave McEnroe time to come in and finally knock off the first volley. He's had few opportunities to do that. There it is. McEnroe finally holds. We'll be back after these words from your local cable systems. Well, that's the only dent he's made on one will serve all night. Looks like John intends to keep trying to press in at last service return game. Quiet, please. He was Thank a you. couple feet inside the baseline. He's already lined up inside the baseline. So my guess is he's going to keep trying that. I think it's a good idea. At least let Lendl see him moving around. There he is, well inside that baseline, and he'll move in as the, there he comes. This hit, it worked. It's the only Love time the tonight thing. when John's been able to rush Yvonne on those short hop returns. But they well, are so chancy. And also, once that ball gets in play, Mary, Yvonne's pace just seems to pick up all the time. Every time he hits the ball, it's harder. So this is John's one big opportunity to get things going before that pace starts.
15 up. It's a look of supreme confidence. Well, you're obviously going to miss hit some balls when you're taking chances like that on the return, but I still think you ought to keep it up because Wendell at least is feeling some pressure all of a sudden. He sure is dealing with it well. John's backing off now. Assume you're impressed, Barry. <laughs> Tell you what, you, you just can't play much better than that. Oh, so powerfully struck is this pass by Yvonne that watch John's racket as it as it gets hit. He doesn't even make a move to this. He can't even begin to try to cover that shot. And Lendl, now just two games away from the semifinals. The backhand up the line of Lendl is one of his most improved shots this year. Left. Now in 12 service up? games, Lendl has only yielded 14 points, and of those 14 points, three of them were double faults. McEnroe has yet to get to break point in this match on Lendl's serve. Beyond that, Barry, I mean as well, Lendl has been taking full-blooded swings off of John's serve. Now that, that's been a big part of it as well, his return. McEnroe has said of his form, I probably won't peak until early next year. And in the months ahead, months where he will be facing a two-month suspension, he'll really have to beef up his, his physicality. And, you know, he's just got to, there's no two ways about it. How hard will this be for John the swallow given he didn't really care for Lindell. Well, that's that's for sure. There's no love lost between them, and they're both two very highly motivated players out there tonight. But I think John will just have to hand it to Yvonne. Yvonne has outclassed him so much. And John, John is the first to acknowledge that. I mean, he knows when he's been outgunned, outplayed. And he's actually very gracious about that sort of thing. He's just going to have to get some lumber and nails and, and start over again in these next couple of months, as I said. And he could do it. I mean, the work he's done already this year has made him much stronger physically. Tony Roach on the left, Samantha Frankel on the right. They seem pretty relaxed. Might be an early night back in Greenwich tonight. Forty fifteen. in the third set. John McEnroe. It's not over yet, but Lendl is up a break in the third. Yeah. 
Sean walked out on that left finger, pumping his fist, and the fans immediately responded to that. They're more than willing to go nuts here right now for him. McEnroe contingent, the Lendl contingent. The Lendl contingent in the front row, the McEnroe in the back row. And way in the corner, Tony Palafox, John's coach. He's hiding from Lendl's serve. <laughs> Eight clean aces for Yvonne Lindell. is really getting trapped on the baseline with many of those shots. The pace is there. It's coming off quickly. Looked to me like he barely had time to get his racket back on that shot. It's a middleweight trying to duke it out with a heavyweight. see graphically why there's been very little cause for the folks here to get optimistic for McEnroe tonight. He has not three. been in the match on Yvonne Lendl's serve. There's no other way to say it. He has not had a break point tonight. In one service game, Lendl was down love 30, but one of those points was a double fall. Caught, please. Barry just left to go downstairs and took his own top spin lob stats with him. How many times has John had to crane his head and watch another lob hoisted perfectly into the back of the court? Thirty. 
McEnroe has been broken once in this set. And holds again. But when we return, Wendell will serve for the match. as McEnroe watched Just astonishing. Look, he had to backpedal to stay in the point, and then he goes for the big one. And it connects. Quiet, please. No offense, but it doesn't take a brain surgeon to watch this and figure out what's going on. It's really, as you said, Mary, it's a heavyweight out dueling a middleweight. Quiet, please. through Jimmy Connors' minds as he watches the number one player playing like this. He might have switched his channel by now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 30 all. Lendl serving for the match. Those are Yvonne Lendl's parents. It's real nasty. So is that. That's downright cruel. 40, 30. Have another look. This sets up the match point. John's seen it all night long. And to stand here, you have to tip your hat to that man, to stand here in the midst of 20,000 people, cheering a ball, and a ball you, a shot like that. that. Quiet, please. They might not like him, but they've got to admire him. Now 
not even the screams of some idiots during his toss could detract Wendell as he beats McEnroe in straight sets. Will return after these words from your local cable systems. All right, Ted. Yvonne, under all the circumstances, the ingredients tonight were all there. I thought you put together three of the best sets I've ever seen you play. How would you feel about that? Well, Barry, I don't think I put three best sets uh, together I ever played, but, uh, you know, as you said, under the circumstances, uh, at night and everybody was expecting uh, fireworks and I don't know whatever, and, uh, and I don't like playing under the lights and all that. Uh, I'm happy I won in straight sets, yeah. Yvonne, I felt you returned very well, and yet, just before we went on the air, you said an interesting thing. You don't feel that John is serving as well as he was a few years ago. No, I think uh, he's serving better the first serve. He mixes it up more. It's hard to pick. But the second serve just sits up. Uh, it doesn't have any sting. And uh, I wasn't really happy with uh, me missing some second serve uh, returns. But, uh, you know, as long as you make them on break points, I guess that's what counts. Yvonne, you didn't come in a whole lot. John was coming in a lot more. Was that your strategy, stay back and, and, and let him force you? Uh, I didn't want to let him force me, but, uh, you know, uh, I was hitting heavy and deep, and uh, he was coming in on, on uh, rather easy shots to pass most of the time. And uh, on top of that, I listened to you this afternoon, and you just said, you know, come in 10 times, you win seven points. I wanted to prove you wrong. So. <laughs> I did say that. Yeah, you did. Did you count it tonight? No, I didn't count it tonight, <laughs> Yvonne. All right, how about Jimmy Connors? Next round, you guys have played a million times. Uh, any thoughts on that semifinal? Um, not really. I, I just want to go home, watch the tape of the hockey game, uh, sleep in, uh, maybe play a little bit tennis tomorrow, play my golf game in the afternoon, and, uh, and uh, you know, my personal pigeon, Warren Bosford, I'm sure is going to come over, and, uh, and um, then Friday, uh, we just probably hit a little bit harder and uh, start worrying about it Saturday morning. Yvonne, thanks for stopping. Good luck. Thanks, bye. All right, now we're going to head into that studio that we've got. Oh, we're going to go back to back to Ted. Teddy, I'm sorry. Back All up right, to you. All right, Barry. It's nice to know that the world's number one player prepares for his match by listening to Barry McKay. That has made <laughs> our day after 11 hours. We'll return to the U.S. Open right after these words.